top class problem solver. The goal of this video is to help us learn to analyze the problem and communicate our solution effectively. A translucent film of thickness 0 0.50 micrometers and refractive index 1.8 is used to coat a glass pane of refractive index 1.5, for which wavelengths of visible light from 400 to 700 nanometers does the film render the pane non-reflective. The problem solving method consists of three steps. The first step is interpretation of the problem, then we devise a strategy, and then we execute our strategy. The first step of the interpretation is to identify the concept embedded in the problem. The use of the word film here implies that this is a problem in interference due to reflection. The next step of the interpretation is to create the model and represent the model in a diagram. We have the film and we have a glass pane. Even though this is in a sense part of the data, let us look at the refractive indices of the film and the glass. So we see that the film has a refractive index of 1.8 and the glass pane has a refractive index of 1.5. So let us set up the model of our film very carefully. This here represents the entire film and this here below it is the glass pane. We assume that the light is incident in air. So in our model of reflection, we'll consider two rays that appear to come from a common source. The first ray, which we'll call ray 1 and which we'll sketch in blue, is reflected off the front surface of the film to the observer. The second ray in red, which we'll call ray 2, is reflected off the back surface of the film and to the observer. It's worth pointing out here that the rays actually go in and out of the film along one dimension. We draw the rays with a slight offset in order to distinguish them clearly. The interference in question will come from the interference between these two rays, 1 and 2. At this point, we consider the refractive indices at each of the two surfaces. This will determine what type of reflection we have for each ray. For the first ray, we notice that it goes from a medium of low refractive index to a medium of a relatively higher refractive index. In the second case, we see that it is incident in the high refractive index and reflects off a surface of lower refractive index. For both interfaces, we'll represent the side with the higher refractive index by these hatched lines. For ray number 1, which is incident in the medium of lower refractive index and strikes the medium of higher refractive index, this ray experiences what we will call a hard reflection. For a hard reflection, a sinusoidal wave experiences a phase shift of pi upon reflection. The second ray is incident in the medium of higher refractive index and reflects off the medium of lower refractive index. That type of reflection we will call a soft reflection. For a soft reflection, the sine wave experiences a phase shift of zero at reflection. The third step of the interpretation is to extract the data carefully from the problem. So at this point, we'll record the actual refractive indices of the film and of the glass pane. We'll also record the thickness of the film. The first step of the strategy is to determine precisely what is required. So we need to find the wavelengths of visible light confined to the range 400 to 700 nanometers, for which the pane becomes non-reflective. 
So we write all this information as that which is required. The second step of the strategy is to construct the concept map. The concept map relates the parameters that are given in the problem and the required parameter. The core of the solution is that the type of interference that we have is determined by the phase difference delta phi between the two rays arriving at the observer. This delta phi in turn is potentially determined by three possible sources of the phase difference. The first consists of a geometric path difference between the paths taken by the two rays. I have denoted that as delta phi geo, but also as in the case of the thin film problem that we have, this geometric path difference is altered by the presence of an intervening medium. So I call this delta phi geomed. The second potential source of phase difference is what's happening at the source. And the third is because of reflection. In this problem, we want the pain to be non-reflective. For the pain to be non-reflective, it means that the reflected light must experience destructive interference. So our overall phase difference must reflect the condition for destructive interference between our two reflected rays. We see that the reflected phase difference depends on the phase change experienced by each of our two rays, 1 and 2. Our geometric phase difference is determined by the geometric path difference delta r. It will also be determined by the refractive index of the intervening medium. And finally, it will be affected by the wavelength of the light. The third step of the strategy is to create an action plan based on the concept map. We will actually move through the problem in a forward direction. Thus, the first step would be to find the phase difference due to the geometric path difference between the two rays. The second step would be to find the phase difference due to reflection. The third step would then be to find the overall phase difference and the fourth step would be to write down the condition for which we have destructive interference between the two rays. The first step of the execution is to follow the steps of the action plan. The first step is to find the phase difference due to the geometric path difference between the two rays. Well, in purely geometric terms, this path difference is twice the thickness of the film. But because this entire path difference takes place within the second medium, we have to multiply it by the refractive index of the film. This gives us the value that we have over here. We then use the general equation to find the phase difference that corresponds to this geometric path difference. We then find the phase difference due to reflection. So once more what we do is we take the phase difference due to ray number 2 and subtract the phase difference on reflection due to ray number 1. We see then that this will give me a pi phase difference. So now that we have the phase difference due to the geometric path difference and the phase difference due to reflection, we take the sum of these two to find the overall phase difference. We notice for this problem there is no phase difference due to the sources. This is because the two rays emanate from a common source. We then find the condition for which we have destructive interference. So first of all, we write down the general equation for destructive interference in terms of phase. This is that the overall phase difference must be an odd multiple of pi. When we substitute from our previous line, we obtain this. We will then remove the common factor, pi. We then subtract 1 from both sides of the equation. 
On the left hand side, we've therefore removed this one over here. On the right hand side, instead of having an odd integer, we now have an even integer. We then divide both sides by negative 2. And on the right hand side, therefore, instead of having an even integer, we just have m as an integer. We are therefore left with the following condition for lambda, namely that lambda is equal to 1800 nanometers divided by any integer m. We now want to find the values of lambda that subscribe to our range 400 to 700 nanometers. Simply by trial and error, we see that the two values for m which fulfill this condition are 3 and 4. These give us the corresponding values of lambda. The second step of the execution is simply to write down and highlight your final answer. So we write down that the wavelengths that satisfy our condition are 450 and 600 nanometers. The third step of the execution is to check your answer. When you check your answer, make sure that you state clearly what is required, that you give the appropriate unit, and that the magnitude of your answer is reasonable. So we're required to find the values of wavelength within the range 400 to 700 nanometers that give destructive interference. And this is indeed what we have provided. We then check the unit, which in this case is nanometers. Finally, we'll check our answer using an alternative method. This method can be called the optical path difference method. We represent each phase difference by an equivalent optical path difference using the same relationship that we used to relate the path difference to the phase difference due to geometry. In addition, in this check, we'll move from right to left. That is to say, we'll start from our known condition and move towards our unknown lambda. First of all, for destructive interference, we know that the optical path difference must be equal to an integer plus a half times the wavelength lambda. When we look at reflection, we see that there is a net phase shift between the two rays of pi. This we will consider as an optical path difference of one half lambda. So when we take the half lambda for reflection out of the general condition for destructive interference, we are left with the fact that the optical path difference due to geometry alone, given by this expression here, must be equal to an integral number of wavelengths. Given that we've evaluated this optical path difference due to geometry here, what we obtain is exactly what we have written down here. So our answer is correct. Here once more are the three steps of our problem solving method. Thank you for watching.